I'm here with Dennis Kang um, at the press conference for Infit for um, the Impact FC show here for Infinite MMA. Dennis, you, you mentioned, um, you talked about it at the press conference very briefly. Obviously, you're on a great win streak at one point, um, both in Pride and in some smaller shows. Um, you then said certain issues, particularly with your training camp and your training, um, came up, which is one of the reasons, among among others, that you had a you went through a rather difficult patch in your in your career. Um, would you care to elaborate on any of that for the fans? Well, uh, you know, it, it kind of all started when uh, when really I, I lost my permit to enter the U.S. You know, with uh, had to do with something to do with, with a visa, and so once I left ATT, my training was so focused and, and um, so unified down there. I really felt kind of lost. You know, when I was back in Canada, I was didn't know how long I was going to stay in Canada for, or if I was going to go back to South Florida, and you know, and so on. So I really kind of I really kind of lost my rhythm in my training, but also mentally, you know. Um, now you talked about training issues such as overtraining when you uh, yeah. when you left ATT, or yeah. and you had to take a lot more responsibility yourself. Um, as someone involved in grappling and also weightlifting, I've you know run into issues like that myself, and I'm sure everyone who's been in competitive sport has. How do you find? Do you balance your training? Do you write your own programs yourself, or do you have someone look after that for you as a professional fighter now? Well, it, it's always best to uh, to let a coach handle it, you know, and to have an outside eye and somebody be a leader, you know, and, 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 and be the boss. Uh, although, I mean, I do have to put my two cents in, you know, because, I mean, nobody's going to know my body better than myself when it comes to, to you know, to being in, in tune with, with if you're fatigued or, or if you fell over training, like you said earlier, you know. So I think that um, the main thing is to really be aware of, where you are, not to confuse overtraining with just hard training. Now, do you have any tips in that regard? Because um, everyone, I'm sure, who's trained hard for a long time, they they sometimes find it difficult to yeah. notice the difference between you know not wanting to do a heavy squat day or you know a shark a few shark bait rounds and waking up early for that versus actually having the body telling you it's breaking down, it can't continue. Do you have any sort of tips in that regard or ideas that can help? you know, help aspiring fighters and competitive athletes? For starters, I think if you have a dedicated coach that knows you, they should be able to tell. And then they should be the ones saying, no, you're not training today or you're only mm -hmm. going to do active recovery because you're a little burnt out or, you know, you look like you're getting sick. Uh, number two, I think it really comes with experience. You have to know, you have to, uh, you have to know your body. Like I said earlier, you, you know, you can't confuse just being worn out from a hard training session, but when you're really flat, and you're losing sleep at night, and, and you're, not, you're not even hungry, and you have no motivation, then chances are you've probably overtrained, or you're on the verge of overtraining, and you're going to get sick, you know? Um, another thing is um, really, really having a set period, in, uh, what they call periodization in training, so you know exactly week one, what you're doing, two, three, four, or however long you like to do it before your fight, so you peak right on time for the fight. And, of course, communicate with your coach. You know, the thing about MMA is we have to work on so many different disciplines. So a lot of the times you'll go to the boxing gym, to the wrestling gym, to the jiu-jitsu, to MMA, you know. So each time that you're going to see a different coach, they're going to want the best from you. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. So you really have to communicate with who you're training with at that moment, saying, hey, look, I'm doing jiu-jitsu tonight, but, you know, I sparred this morning boxing, so I don't want, you know. You really have to let them know that you're not doing just that at that particular moment. And you found that, that makes sense with what you talked about. Like when you said you were with the American top team, I'm under the impression that was all done almost under one roof, all the different training? Or? Well, for, for that particular fight, that was mainly because I was down in Brazil training really hard. And then as soon as I got back, I, uh, I went down to ATT to train for Bisping. I was really excited about this fight. So I, even though the training at ATT was incredible, and you know, I, got, I, you know, I started training with all my old sparring partners and, and, uh, and, and even some new ones, it was still new training, a new rhythm to me because I'd been used to such a different one for about two years yeah. now. So that, that's what happened, you know. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. So, I mean, your opinion generally on the training thing, you have to obviously be aware of your own body, but you've obviously put a big emphasis. You really need someone, not just a boxing coach, not just a jiu-jitsu coach, not just a kickboxing Muay Thai coach, almost someone to really to look after the whole, exactly. look at the whole thing, who knows you well and can, you know, help help assess as, help assess where you're at and where you need to go with things in in terms of the big picture and your phys physical health as opposed to just yes. the technical and the, exactly. the fighting side of things. 
Okay, um, I guess the last question, also this one came up a bit during the press conference. Um, I remember watching years ago in the Bushido tournament, you and Paolo Filio were probably the favourites to get through that, and you both were going to meet in the finals. Um, you ended up fighting Kazuo Mizaki, who Paolo had already, had already defeated there. Um, as someone, I'd imagine you would have also built up in your head uh, a certain opponent. How did it affect you having to change opponents at the last minute like that, or did it affect you? Was it not something that... No, you know, I, I remember it uh, pretty well, actually. Uh, I was in the dressing room. I was almost getting ready to walk out for Paul Filio, you know. Before you walk out of your dressing room and take you to, like, a little on-deck area or a waiting area, I was getting ready to go to the waiting area, and then they come and, uh, and they let me know that, hey, Paul is not fighting, you're going to fight exactly instead. So, yeah. <laughs> honestly, I didn't really have any time to think about it too much because, I mean, when you're, when you're about to fight... This close to a fight, you know, you're so focused, you're like, okay, whatever, let's go, let's get it done, you know. So, no, the, I didn't really get upset about it or anything. I thought, hey, you know, it's still, uh, I'm still in the finals and I'm still uh, going out there to win. Yeah, I ended up being quite a, it was quite a very competitive fight, I'm sure the, the audience was pretty entertained throughout it, so it was a win in a way in that sense. Um, thanks very much for your time, Dennis. Um, all the best in your fight. Well, what's almost a rematch most of us would have thought would have been the Bushido final. And again, thanks for your time. This is Ilan from Infinite MMA.